Hi everybody, Kurt Zepp here. So I want to do a quick video on which telescope I should use for doing solar observation with. Now we're doing a outreach event with our local astronomy club in a couple days and I want to bring one of these scopes and I'm still not sure which one I'm going to bring. So I want to do some testing with it. So I'm going to use my Quark, the hydrogen alpha filter. Both of these scopes work really well if I'm using a white light filter, but I want to do something kind of different, bring the, you know, so we can see some solar flares and really cool stuff on the surface. Both of these scopes are really good for doing that, but I'm still, they do have some sl slight differences that I want to go over right now. So the first scope is my Orion Short Tube 80. I've had this for years. It's an 80 millimeter aperture, 400 millimeter focal length, and it's a five. This is only $109, so it's a great deal. It's a doublet, which means it's got two pieces of glass for the lens. It's and that are air spaced. The two pieces of glass uh, does a little bit more with the chromatic aberration that all refractors suffer from. That's where the light rays don't meet at one different colored light rays don't meet at one point. So you have. The uh, more pieces of glass, the better it is to take care of that. So that's the Orion Short Tube 80. Now, I could also bring this tube. This is my Orion ED80. This is the one I've been using for solar astrophotography. And this one is, a, is about $450. So why is this one so much more? Well, it's got a couple differences. For one thing, uh, it's 80 millimeters aperture, but it's uh, 600 millimeters focal length, and it's f 7.5. So that means it's going to give a smaller field of view, but it's going to be it's going to be more magnified. But that's not the only difference. The other difference is the glass. This is this has is a doublet as well, but one of the glasses is extra dispersion glass. ED glass is what they call it, and that gives it, uh, makes it better for that chromatic aberration that I was talking about. So that's the big difference. That's why this one is uh, much more expensive than, than that one. Now I've used both of these scopes before for solar observing, and this scope I think I've seen the flares better out of. However, this scope I can actually get more of the field of view of the sun. I can actually almost get the whole entire sun with this scope. So that has some advantages too, especially for outreach. But I just want to go do a, a little bit of testing with it. I'm going to connect a camera up to scopes to, so maybe you can see some differences with that. Anyways, let's go take a look. Well, Ryan, here I am in the front of my house, and here's my setup, what I'm going to be doing. So I've got my... ED80 on the ZWO AM3 mount right now and it's already tracking. I've got it set for solar tracking mode. And I'll do that first. Then I'll do my short tube, the ST80. I'm, I also have my camera, that's the ZWO ASI-174, my new solar camera. What I'm, gonna do, I'm not gonna show you great images or anything, I'm just gonna put it on there so you can see the difference, if any, with using the different telescopes. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do it. For most of this, I'm just going to, I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to keep going and doing it. And I might uh, say a few words in between. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, there's one ginormous flare up there that I've just noticed with this uh, telescope. I'll try to take an uh, image of it, and uh, then I'll switch the telescopes out and see what I get with the other telescope. Okay, I'm on sharp cap right now, and I'm going to go scroll the outside. I'm focused okay. I'm not going to do a whole big focus routine on this for this little video here. I'm just going to go to the uh, scroll to the outside and see if we can see some flares. I'm, on, I'm focused in on a, a sunspot right now. Well, I suppose I could do a quick focus job with this thing, which you would do and display histogram stretch. And 
And the way I do it these days, I just hit the high contrast. And it's very contrasting now, so you can actually focus in really well. Yeah, every little change you can see. Okay, I'm happy with that. And I'll take the contrast off again. All right, so now I'm going to scroll to the out, outside edge and see if I can find some of these flares. All right, so we're on one of the edges here. What I'll do is I'll turn up the, I'll leave the gain alone, but I'm just going to turn up the exposure. And you should start seeing some of these flares up here. There they are. That looks pretty good in there, I think. What do you think, huh? All right, let's just scroll around the outside of the sun here, and we'll see what we see with this telescope. Oh, yeah, there's some other ones over here. Wow. <laughs> Oh boy, too bad I'm not taking imaging today. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of other stuff going on, so oh, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm controlling it with the, uh, by the way, with the ZWO AM3 mount controller, which is, I don't know what the hell is it, a Sky Atlas now? Oh, look at that one. Wow. Yeah, let's see if I can focus a little better. I don't know. Could be there is not too, the uh, atmosphere is not too stabilized. That's why it's wigging in and out of focus here so easily. There we go. Ooh, there we go. Good. I think I got it now. Pretty impressive. Okay, let's continue down. I'm almost. Ooh, there looks an interesting one. Wow. If you're wondering what the difference between a flare and a prominence is. I actually, I believe a prominence is just when it emanates from the surface and then comes back down and it's caught in its magnetic field. And the flare is actually when it actually releases. But I'm not sure on that. I, I don't know my solar terminology and I keep looking it up and, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I can't tell the difference. I, I need an actual picture and I haven't found one yet that really just says this is what a flare is and this is what a prominence is so i call them both interchangeably and that's i know it's not the right thing to do but that's i'm telling you what i do right now if somebody knows please leave a comment be delighted okay yeah look at these things yeah so these are prominences i believe because they're coming back in on themselves okay well i think i'm almost going around the complete circle here because I started and the orientation was off to the side. Oh boy, there's, I missed those earlier. Ooh. Now again, they look really impressive just observing it. I, I saw them clearly using my little eyepiece. By the way, the eyepiece is a Celestron 40 millimeter Plossy eyepiece and I, I use that because it gives me a good field of view using the cork. Remember the cork is a has a four point two barlow on it, so it's um, narrows it narrows your field of view quite a bit. Okay, I've gone around completely right now. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna switch this whole thing out and I'm gonna put the different telescope on there. And I'm gonna take a look because I, I clearly saw all these flares with this setup, I want to see how well I can see it with the ST80. Okay, so bear with me, folks. Okay, so I'm out here and I've got the e the ST80 on here, and I'm gonna try to do a quick little focusing like I did before. Okay. Wow, that looks pretty good too. My goodness. I think I'm seeing more contrast with this scope than I am with the other one. <laughs> Ain't that this? There we go. You see, definitely see more surface area with this. And let me go to the edges. Yeah, son of a gun, they're there too. Look at that. Boy, I am impressed with this little scope too. I like how I can get more of the. Uh, area on it so if i want to do it i can do a composite if i want to get the whole sun 
using the cork, and this disco might be easier to do that with. Uh, since this covers more of the uh, the sun, I won't. Uh, it'll be less images that I'd have to take in order to do the entire sun. Mm. Well, son of gun, I don't know about you, but I'm not seeing too much of you know a difference between this scope and the other scope, imaging wise, as far as finding the flares. So maybe we'll bring this this little one. Yeah, there's a lot of action going on in the sun right now. Unfortunately, I've got to do a bunch of other stuff today, so I, I, I can't be doing imaging today, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, as luck would have it. But that's all right. I'm, I'm doing this, and this is fun. I got to tell you, getting this cork was one of the best things I ever did because I really enjoy just looking at the sun, uh, doing an observation, and it's real easy to do. So, some of these solar scopes and solar imaging using the cork, or even, you know, I suppose if you get the uh, one of those Coronado, that's a beautiful look at that flare. Get one of those Coronado deals or the Lunt, any of those things, I'd recommend it. Okay. Well, I think that's it. Let me shut everything okay, down. Okay, folks. So, I think I'm going to shut everything down now. I got my answer, and the answer is both of the scopes do pretty well. And that little. ST80 did better than I thought. I thought it was this one, the other one was going to be much, much better, but I'm not seeing that in the images that I took. And I did actually see it with the the observing. I, I didn't think I was going to see it as clearly um, as I did. So I'm very happy about that, that both of these scopes I can do uh, better, uh, do just as, uh, just as well with either one. But I do think I do get more contrast, at least observing, with the with the ED80 than I did with the ST80, but the ST80 did pretty well, uh, don't get me wrong. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time.